Classic Gamers, and thanks for viewing Jay the Classic Gamers. Let's play Jim Fire for the Sega Genesis Part 1. I was getting a little bored with Action 52, so I decided that I would play another game alongside with it. This game is a game I played a lot when I was younger, and it's a very awesome game. So with that said, let's get started. Once upon a time, Ishmeria was a haven for people and creatures of lore. Until some horses and lizards started trampling all over it. That is just the joke. Six magicians guarded the island until one day a fire dragon challenged them. Ever since, all magic has been under a curse. Behold the crown of seven jewels. Jim Fire! For many years, the crown has been abused. Oh no, that's not good. Robin, save us! Break the spell on Jim Fire! Robin thought of past misdeeds. And it looks like she's about to stab herself. In my heart, I know Father will understand. No, he will not. He will lock you away in a tower far, far away. Crest of Lyle, Prince Ender, Pluvius. Now is the time for magic to end all evil misdeeds. Crest of Blanche, Prince Eric, Zendor. And we vanquish the foe to assail the Highlands. Crest of Mobu, Prince Leander, Skolrek. The people of Mobro may perish without my magic. Crest of Coril, Prince Lars, Embryon. Uh, my crystal will save people of peace from darker fates. Crest of Flax, Prince Eric, Skyla. The warring will not cease until Elserod is defeated. Crest of Chrysalis, Prince Garth, Chilla. On our task, we shall meet again in Gemfire. Or else Ron shall wield the Fire Dragon to recapture the lost gems of Gemfire. Oh yeah, asshole, we shall see about that. The magic of the gems must be reunited to trap the fire dragon of the crown.
Restore the magic of Gemfire, and all people and creatures shall live in peace again. Jerry the Classic Gamer is proud to present Gemfire! Press start. Okay, we shall. Alright folks, so here's the main menu screen. There are four different scenarios to choose from. Aaron and Ander, Flax's Shame, Tarion's War, and Gemfire. And you can also have two saved games at the same time. We are going to play the scenario that this game is named after, Gemfire. Scenario 4. The Lankshire family bribed Pender to desert his own brother, Aaron. They hope to ally with Erdrick, long lost son of Elseride, and gain his land in the south. One ruler must stop the warring and reunite Gemfire. How many players? One, of course. After you choose your scenario and how many players there's going to be, you get to choose from four different families the Blanche family, the Lyle family, the Tudoria family, and the Divas family. Each one of these families is different in difficulty. I'd say Blanche and Lyle are probably the easiest, Divas is the hardest, and Tudoria is the second hardest. So we are going to play as the son of Elzerod, Edric, and the Tudoria family. From this day, I will wield my powers for Prince Edric. The son of Elzerod, Edric is rightful heir to the crown. He have followed him to the south to pledge my service. After you choose your family, you get to choose from one of four advisors. Eldro the Wise, Jade the Enlightened, Jasper the Riddler, and Zorax the Mighty. We shall choose Zorax the Mighty. Heed my advice, and your foes will fall with ease! Shall we begin? Yay! So here we are, finally at the beginning of the game. Before we get started and do anything, I want to go through all the commands to show you what they do. The first commands are your military commands. You can attack another country, you can recruit more soldiers, you can move troops, and you can hire monsters as your fifth unit. The next set of commands are your domestic commands. You can develop the cultivation, which will make you harvest more food in September, or you can develop your protection, which will protect you from natural disasters. You can also trade on the market. You can sell food. Sometimes it's low, sometimes it's high, and sometimes it's average. You can also give food to your people, which will raise their loyalty. And you can also transport goods. You can send or receive them. The next set of commands are your diplomacy commands. You can ally with another family. You can negotiate with another family. You can either try to get one of their vassals by defection, or you can ask them to surrender to you. You can also sabotage them, which will destroy some of their crops and their protection. Or you can plunder them and take some of their goods from them. The last set of commands are your miscellaneous commands. You can view yourself or another nation. You can change lords. You can entrust one of your vassals to have the computer take over for them. Or you can search, which sometimes you will find a very cool item which is good for your vassals. Alright, now that I went over all the commands with you, let's start playing the game. Let's check out this guy. He's got 151 troops. He's not much of a threat, but we're not going to attack him just yet. Let's go ahead and develop our cultivation. We can always use cultivation. Lord Kelvin is isolated all by himself. He does not have any hostile neighbors. So we are just going to move all of his troops to 25.
Now it is Lord Alex's turn. Let's take a look at 28 and see how much of a threat he is. Ooh, he's got 180 troops. He has more than me, so let's go ahead and recruit some troops. Uh-oh, the other families are already going to war with each other. I think it's already time to go to war. Let's check out 24. He only has 151 troops. Yeah, let's do this. Let's just go ahead and send all of our troops in. And we will choose Skyla as our fifth unit. And we only need about five days of food. That should be good enough. Is this okay? Hell yeah. Let the battle begin. As you can see, we have five different units. Our first unit is the horse. Our second unit is a soldier unit. Our third unit is an archer unit. Our fourth unit is another soldier unit. And our fifth unit is, of course, Skyla. There are three ways to win a battle. The first way is to capture their flag. The second way is to have them retreat. And the third way is to kill them all. The soldier units have a unique ability to build a fence to help barricade your flag in. Building a fence does not always work. I believe it's based on how many soldiers are in your unit. For example, I have 84 soldiers in my unit, so I have an 84% chance to build a fence. For this first battle only, I will leave the battle animation on, just to let you see it. But for all the other battles after this, I will be turning it off. It just takes up too much time. Let's go ahead and build us one last fence to barricade ourselves in. One thing I just really love about this game is the music. It kicks ass. I was just being an asshole when I built this fence. I do wish they made the AI a little smarter in this game. They do some pretty stupid shit. Okay, dumbass archer, you left yourself open for a rear attack. And here's the battle animation that will be turned off after this battle, so enjoy it while you can. The archers can only attack enemies that are two squares away from them, either horizontally or vertically. Let's go ahead and use our archers to soften up the horses a little bit, and then we'll use our horses to do a rear attack on them.
Let's go ahead and do another rear assault on the archers and kill them. Now it is a time for our horses to do a rear attack on their horses. Can we finish them off? Ah, oh, so close. Only two left. I should be able to win this battle by the next round. Bring it on, soldiers, even though you're doing a rear attack on me. Ouch, they did a little damage to me. Let's go ahead and kill the horses with our archers and then take the flag with our horses and win this battle. The defender's base was occupied. The attackers won. Prince Edric, we took 24. Linden. Prince Edric, we can hold Gelford for ransom. What shall we demand? Let's demand 99 food. Gelford was set free for ransom. Let's go ahead and check the markets. This time they're low. You want to buy when it's low and you want to sell when it's high. So let's go ahead and buy some and then develop some more cultivation. Well, we already know that the market's low, so let's go ahead and buy us some more food, and then we'll develop some more cultivation with Lord Alex also. When you defeat a province, your leader or vassal will move to the new territory, and the old province will be led by the head of the family. You really don't want your leader ruling from so far away because he has decreased stats. So what you want to do is replace him with a vassal. I have two vassals available, but let's see which one has better stats. It looks like Allen has a little bit better stats than Bradley, so let's use Allen. Alright, now that we got that taken care of, let's go ahead and buy us some food and then develop our cultivation. Every three months, a random event will happen, and this is the plague, and you don't want it to hit you. Please don't hit me. Alright, it didn't hit me this time. Plague is sweeping through the country. The ogre went on a rampage, ravaging the land. That asshole. Go ahead and check the market, see if it's changed. No, it's still low. Let's just go ahead and develop our cultivation. Lord Allen has some extra cash to spend, so let's go ahead and buy us some food. Now let's just develop some cultivation. Uh-oh, looks like Lord Alex has got some new neighbors. Let's check them out. Lord Jeff's only got 60 troops, and Hubert's only got 120. They're not much of a threat. We're not ready to attack them just yet, so let's just develop our cultivation.
Not much to do with Edric, so let's just develop our cultivation. There's not much that we can do with any of our guys this month, so let's just develop their cultivation. Let's go ahead and check the market. Ooh, the prices have changed. Now they are high. Let's sell us a little bit and then we'll develop our cultivation. With Alan, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to sell some of the food and then I'm going to recruit some more troops. With Lord Kelvin, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to sell some food and then recruit some troops. Let's go ahead and view our neighbors and check them out. He's only got 70 troops, and Hubert's got 149. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's time to go to war. Let's attack 28. Let's go ahead and send all of our troops, even though that'll leave Providence 27 with zero troops, we will move our troops from 25 and 26 to 27. So that way they will have some troops. Oh shit, here's our first look at the most powerful fifth unit in the game, the Dragon. This asshole can attack people from two squares away, even diagonally. He's a big dick. So I want to win this battle as fast as I can without losing a bunch of troops. Let's go ahead and put this guy on the flag and start building some fences. I'm turning the animation off just to save us some time. I really don't want that dragon to attack my troops. He can do some major damage. I hope he goes and attacks Skyla instead. No, the asshole's headed for my troops. Oh shit, this might have been a major mistake attacking them. Let's build a fence in front of the dragon to slow him down. Oh no, it didn't work. This could be devastating. Damn it, the asshole dragon's going after my troops. 
Look at that. He just wiped out a whole unit. Well, we're just going to have to try to capture the flag as fast as we can. Oh no, now he's going after my flag protector. Well, at least he didn't wipe him out. Yeah, how you like this rear attack, asshole dragon? Wow, I only had a 23% chance to break the fence. I'm surprised it broke. Kick the dragon's ass, Skyla. Keep on kicking that dragon's ass, Skyla. I'm not exactly sure about this, but I believe there is another way you can win if they run out of food. Come on, archers, please kill him so I can just take the flag. Yes, thank you very much. The defender's base was occupied. The attackers won. Prince Edric, we took 28. Celsi. Sometimes after a battle you will capture their leader and sometimes you will not. Oh wow, Alex is in rough shape. He's only got 77 troops. Oh shit, the king has 341. And I'm not too worried about these other guys. The first thing we need to do is supply Alex with some gold and some food. Oh shit, it's the plague. Please don't hit me. Good, it didn't hit me. Plague is sweeping through the country. Terrible floods are devastating the southeast. Go ahead and check the market. The prices are high, so let's go ahead and sell a little bit of food, and then we'll develop our cultivation. Alan's got some troops. We need to send to 27 immediately. The first thing we're going to do with Edric is change the ruler of 27 to Bradley. Not much else we can do, so let's just develop our cultivation. Kelvin, on the other hand, needs to move his troops to 25. I just sent supplies to Lord Alex. It looks like someone is plundering his ass, and that ain't cool. Anyway, let's go ahead and develop the cultivation. With Lord Allen, we need to move his troops to 27. Eh, let's do the same old, same old. Let's develop our cultivation. The people have very little faith in you! Okay, okay, Zorax. 
Let's just keep on developing our cultivation. A pasta offered to fight for 24, Linden. This is awesome. He is one of the best fifth units in the game. Well, folks, we are just about out of time, so this is a good place to stop this video. We'll continue in the next episode. So this concludes Jay the Classic Gamers. Let's play Gemfire for the Sega Genesis Part 1. I want to thank you again for watching, and be sure to stay tuned for Part 2.